Camilla Buchanan. What do you make of this Zimbabwe team? Special moment for them, their debut at the World Cup. Well, what a, what a debut to make. You can see they're really excited. We've got Takada in at goal shooter, Nanvu in at goal attack. In at wing attack, we've got Sachitama, Malaudi in at centre, Kwaramba at wing defence, Kwanga at goal defence, and Makusha in at goalkeeper. A good combination of the defence there, another defending combination that's really worked together. In for Sri Lanka, we've got the beautiful height of Singalingam. You're going to see her height soon enough. Mendes in at goal attack. Wanatha Lake are in at wing attack. Amarawansa centre. Rajapaksa in at wing defence. Captain Jayasuria, you'll see her leading at goal defence. And Disanayaka in at goalkeeper. So we're going to see some height. We'll talk about that very shortly. But a good matchup, and welcome to the World Cup, Zimbabwe. Absolutely. Zimbabwe make their World Cup debut, and they have plenty of fans here inside the MS Bank Arena in Liverpool on court two. They've been making a lot of noise since the players took the court. There they are, and they are well up for this one. What a fantastic turnout. Sri Lanka get us underway with the centre pass. They're playing left to right in their orange dresses. And it's the gems of Zimbabwe right to left in green and yellow. And they've got a turnover early on. That'll give them confidence in their first World Cup. Yeah, that's a nice line of defence that Zimbabwe put on, making sure that Sri Lanka weren't happy going straight forward for their first ball. Fantastic athletic take there from Malaudi. Listen to the noise in here, firing it into Joyce Takaiza for her first goal and Zimbabwe's first goal in a Netball World Cup. And that reception there. It was almost like the winning goal in the final. Fantastic support. And what a settler. You want that first ball to go through the net. And it was a turnover. Jaisira got us back underway from the centre. The Sri Lankan captain. Into the hands now of Rajapaksa. Feeding into the six feet nine. Tajini Sivalingam. 40 years of age. And here she is. Easy enough in that kind of height. I'd hope so. I mean, that was literally a flick of the wrist and it was in. Fantastic. She's the tallest player at the tournament, needless to say. Over the top now from Mendes. And here's the centre, Amara Wansa. She appeared at the World Cup in 2015. Back inside to Sivalingam. Two from two. Nice, and that was nicely placed. You could see the real precision on that pass. So Zimbabwe work it through midcourt. Getting position is Taikadza again, and it's an opportunity for Lovu, and she nails it. Ursula Lovu, just five foot two, playing goal attack. That is a, that is a stat for you. Five foot two in the circle against the tallest player in the league, six foot 11 the other end. And we have the tallest player and the shortest player of the championships playing in the same game. There is hope for the goal attacks out there. Yeah, if you like to shoot, keep at it. Inside ball again to Taikadza. And she finishes, <laughs> look at the support. The Zimbabwe are getting here. This is fantastic. Plays a netball in Australia, Taikadza, for the Olympic Dam Club. She's got three kids, a 14-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a three-year-old. Bossing it is what I say. Three kids in a World Cup. My hat goes off to you. There's the odd netball commentator with three kids as well, who's working with us this weekend. Who's that, Camilla? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Great to meet young Kenya yesterday, your newborn. Thank you very much, yeah, balancing the three kids, but to be able to come out and have a World Cup, I mean, I would imagine she's got a wealth of support around her. Taikadza, fantastic to see the support. And as we talked about in the earlier game, 
you know, it's great to see older players playing, but it's also great to see women. You know, this is a, a women's game. Women have babies and have children. Great to support them in the elite yes. sport. Zimbabwe through their centre. Malawi. There's another one for Lovu. And that action is actually something that we see in the African nations. We see that quite a lot, especially with the shorter goal attacks. You see the one-handed shot, unlike the two-handed shot that we just saw there from Sivalingham. The one-handed step back. The question is, how does the goalkeeper of Zimbabwe, Makusha, how does he try and keep Sivalingam out of that kind of near range to the basket? Well, this is where strategics come in. Fantastic goal there. This is where the strategics come in. And, you know, there's a, there's a huge height difference here, but it's not about player for player. It's about working as a unit. And what you can see, fantastic. Right on cue. Oh, my goodness. Makusha. Well, that in itself was a fantastic, what we call a backing up, where the player tracks back, gets underneath the ball and is able to challenge that. That is ridiculous. But what we had there from a pressure point of view, did you see the goal defence running around the back of the player there to confuse the space and able to win that ball? Fantastic conversion for Zimbabwe. Tell you what, this Netball World Cup's come alive here early on day one. And it's all about this marvellous support for Zimbabwe. We're here for the first time over the top. And Joyce Taikadza. Finishes again, 100% for her so far. Long bomb into Sivalingam. You see that. a lot of that today. Fantastic, the elevation there of Makusha is fantastic. You can see they're looking in early to pass that ball in, but what you can see from Sivalingam is that there's not an awful lot of movement when she does receive the ball. So it has to be pinpoint because she doesn't seem to move around the second team. Opportunity here for Zimbabwe to go two goals clear, and they do. Nice screen set up there for the centre pass. And again, able to challenge that ball was fantastic. You see Mendes and Wanoseleka on the centre pass line, just screening for each other to come through. Sivalingam, she almost throws it down into the goal, doesn't she? <laughs> She's that tall. Incredible. We can update you with all the rules and regs and netball as we go. There you are, contact. You interfere with an, an opponent. Players stops and restarted. Acrobatic take from Joyce Saikadza. She's on form early on. She had to start up a GoFundMe page to raise the airfare to get over here to play for Zimbabwe at this tournament. That's a GoFundMe page worth donating to, isn't it? Absolutely, and that's something that we, you know, we see. We've got Zimbabwe in here. We've got four African nation teams in, which is the most out of any of the region, INF regions. You can see that it's really been pumped into the African nations to help them get the support, but that's phenomenal that a player is having to set up a GoFundMe page to represent her country. Yeah, she made the move to play a netball in Australia. She's lived there for a number of years now. Great defensive play there from... Ursula Lovu, yeah, she saw a slap of hand. She was so disappointed she didn't come up with it. She's got a fantastic work rate. Oh, the attacking contact there called on Sivalingham. They're going to have to change that. So Zimbabwe with a chance here if they can convert this possession to go three goals clear. And with Sivalingham at the other end, that would be a very impressive start. So that's that. Fantastic. Hasn't missed yet. You can feel the energy with every single pass in Zimbabwe. You can feel the crowd get behind every pass, every run for the ball. Oh, just slipping on the floor there was the Zimbabwean centre Malaudi. Managed to hold on to the ball. Inside to Lovu. Goal defence, obstruction. Hold 
it's fascinating to watch Lolovu, isn't it? Because she's playing goal attack, but she's like a mid-quarter up front. She is, and that's what's tricky. You know, you have someone of that height, you think, oh, we can we can leave them alone, but she's such a playmaker that you can't. You have to pay attention to her. Joe Soria has got her work cut out for her in terms of cutting that. She's got the range, Joe Soria, but the speed and the agility of Lovu is really exciting to watch. Over the top to Sivillingham. Left-hander. So, Sri Lanka eight, Sivillingham eight. Up to nine even, 12-9, back within three. Good intercept there from Raja Paksa, although she gets called for the contact. Unlucky. On to the right, balancing foot. So, Kaita has another one. Huge support here for Zimbabwe, loving every moment, cheering every goal as they get sent home for the Africans. And we just see the doubling up there on Sivillingham. The attacking contact pulled again. She doesn't really move. Oh, the back line, sorry. But you want to see Mendes get, get herself into this game a little bit more. You can see that they're targeting underneath the post. Nice. They're targeting Sivillingham. So you want your goal attack. You want Mendes to do a little bit more work out the front, to be a target, just to take that pressure off. Perpetua. Sitchatima, the captain, at wing attack. Zimbabwe can't intercept that one. Sri Lanka, so... Close to Kaiser. Steps forward once more. She's so cool, isn't she? Just unruffled here in this white-hot atmosphere on court two. You can, and, and you don't see quite the same calmness from the Sri Lankan defence. Oh, long ball. Oh, oh how it. about that, Zimbabwe? Oh, Quicksilver. Beautiful, long ball into the corner. Goalkeeper went out for the fly. Couldn't quite get her hands to it. Underneath the post, uncontested. And that's why she's so confident. However, that said, that is the kind of balls that Sri Lanka need to go for. They need to pick and choose. At the moment, they're swatting flies. They're going for every single interception. You've got to pick and choose because Zimbabwe have got their connections going into the attack. They've got their strategy. They've got their structure. So to win some balls, if you see some changes coming in here, As we talked about, we need the goal attack for Sri Lanka to do a little bit more work, take the pressure off Sivillingham, take on some shots. So Mendes leaves the court for Sri Lanka. They're down by six in the opening quarter. Zimbabwe playing to the sound of the singing fans here. Malawi feeds it in. Sorry, that was Amara Wansa. Into Sivalinga. Another goal for Zimbabwe. 17 11 now. As we approach the final three and a half minutes of this opening quarter, it's been a furious start for Zimbabwe in World Cup netball. Nice little scoop pass there from the wing attack, Perpetua Sichitima, converted by Lovu. Lovely underhand pass there. The obstruction, but nothing phases her. Look at the way she took that ball. Sakaita from slightly longer range this time, just bounces over the back. Sri Lanka moved the ball quickly through mid-court. This game being played at pace. Both these teams desperate for an opening win. And remember the top three from each group go through to the next stage, and that's a, another excellent turnover from Makusha. Great pressure, just disappointed with that that she wasn't able to hold on to the end of that she's an experienced player Sivillingham the last three seasons she's played in Australia for 
in Melbourne and she's, she's got the experience, she should be holding on to those. Oh, nice work. Unable to come up with the intercept. This Anayaka. And launching herself out of the circle. They've just done a positional switch here. You can see Jayasuria has slipped back onto the goal shooter. Cross court pass from Malawi. Almost intercepted. Lobo lob it over the top to, to Gaita. She shows good agility to pick up the loose ball, work the one two and get position. Fantastic. And a little no look pass there from Lobo. That's better from Sri Lanka, working the ball to the circle edge. And then a rotation coming through to the seat ball underneath the post. Obstruction called on the centre there. They're double teaming her, aren't they? Which means the goal attack, one of the Lakers, pretty much open all the time because it's it's taking two defenders to defend Sivalingam and still she gets the lob pass and puts it home. Yeah, and that's what we talked about. You know, you need your goal attack to be able to step up and take some shots. We're still waiting for our goal attack for Sri Lanka to take a shot. Falling over is Joyce Sakaidze. She gets back to her feet. No harm done. Good to see. There is the goal attack. One of the Laker feeding it back in. Not happy with that shooting range. You can see that if she's more than a metre and a half away from the post, she's not going to put that shot up. Fascinating contest, this isn't it? You're absolutely right. Anything from four or five feet away from the goal, she's just she's not interested. She likes to get right underneath. Oh, just the timing on that release from Makusha. Those balls are for the taking, though. However, you just want to see Sri Lanka be a little bit more savvy with the ball. Use the fakes, let the play go out, and then you should have Sivalingam underneath the post. Not comfortable. Goal attack was in good position there, decided not to shoot. Wanted to give it to single England, she gets the obstruction call. And that is quarter time as Sivalingam drains another one. We will go into the break with Zimbabwe leading Sri Lanka by 19 goals to 14. It's been an absolutely cracking opening quarter. Huge noise here in court two. We'll see you after the break for quarter two. And there's Zimbabwe's key player up front, Joyce Takaita. She's been impressive. On the shoot, over 90%. Such a solid target for them, but the agility to go with it. So Sri Lanka. In the centre, Amara Ansa. Feeding it in there, go to is Zivalingam for obvious reasons. Six foot nine. Long pass through mid-court, just over the top of Turkaidza. So, lucky break for Sri Lanka, but well defended through mid-court now. Amaro once at the centre, shifts it quickly, and that's all the way through to Sivalingam once more. Almost impossible to stop if they move the ball, Camilla, through mid-court that quickly. Sivalingam is going to get open every time. Well, on a one-on-one, -on -one, you, you can see that um, Makusha has been able to challenge those balls. However, if she's sitting high enough and has enough space behind her, as you said, if the ball shifts through the court quick enough... Malawi came up with the intercept in mid-court. She gets it back. Now it's turned over again, and here comes Sri Lanka. Oh, just not, not comfortable putting that ball in on a one-on-one. -on -one. She was at the circle edge. No defender in front of her, no defender behind Sivalinga, but she wasn't comfortable. And that has been created from the fact that the goal defence has now started to run the back of Sivalinga. So you, what you'll see is you'll see the goalkeeper sitting just slightly in front of her. The back space seems like it's open. No, goal defence has got other plans. She runs in through the back, challenges that. Sri Lanka 
Turnover possession in their favour. Great Down by hands. three. Roger Paxler getting their hands to that three foot mark. Really good work in mid court over the top to the tall timber. And home it goes once more. Two points the difference now. 2018, Zimbabwe led by five goals after the first quarter, but Sri Lanka have come out fighting here in the second. And there's another one. That's better. That's better from Wanafileka. Just using the whole three seconds to get the placement on the ball. She was on one foot, she was comfortable, there was a two on one, but she used the whole three seconds to place it. That is what will work for them. Laudi into the goal attack, Lovu. One-handed right-hand shot. Lovu sitting on 100%, six from six. Not a massive amount of volume for a goal attack, but when you're doing as much work as you are, and your goal shooter is dominating that circle, it's not a problem. Back to one goal behind Sri Lanka. Netball World Cup coming your way from the MS Bank Arena in Liverpool. Zimbabwe fans bringing in the noise, just missing that opportunity there. That's what Sri Lanka are looking for. Contact in midfield. Big bump in midcourt, not called. And... Fantastic. That was an amazing left call from the umpire. The ball was in the air. We'll just have a look here. She took that cleanly with two hands. Yeah, fair contest, wasn't it? Contesting, absolutely. No contact. One of the Laker. Sivalingam again. A very smooth shot, doesn't she? 21 from 21, that's 100%. She has scored all of Sri Lanka's goals so far. Nice movement there from Tukaiza, just changing her angle. The feet didn't come in on the first second, so she changes the angle for it to go into the opposite space. Well fed. Here come the Sri Lankas again. Good work from Aldo once at the centre. She still hasn't taken a shot, the goal attack, one of the Lakers. She's been in shooting position three or four times now in this quarter alone, but every time she's just going to lay it off to Sybil Ingham, and I guess you can't blame her. Well, when she's sitting on 22 from 22, no, you can't, but can she do it for 60 minutes is the question. And yes, yeah, she's doing her playmaking, but I, I want to see her taking some of the some of the pressure off of Sybil Ingham, because to do that against the Zimbabwe defence for 60 minutes is going to be a tall ask. Nice change of angle again there. Beautiful feet from Lovu. The timing of that pass was absolutely impeccable, wasn't it? Precision at its best. And, we're seeing Lovu with some fantastic, fantastic traits here. A long bombing, not going to happen. Makusha, right place, right time for Zimbabwe. And they need those easy picks and they can work it up court and look for an opportunity. Flat ball there, and that's what I'd like to see from Sri Lanka. Is them working the ball in a little bit more flat gives them by something to think about. Putting the ball in from the centre third when you're just trailing by two goals, probably not the smartest choice. A little fake pass, she's got all the goods, Lovu. The fakes, the no looks, the accuracy on shot, fantastic. Rubbing her hands together, she means business. Out of the Harare City Club. Love pass, almost another intercept from Makusha. She is working for everything, the goalkeeper for Zimbabwe. I mean, look at this backing up. That is just really unlucky for Makusha. She was willing everything about that to win that ball. She just couldn't hook it to herself. But fantastic footwork. Four ahead again, Zimbabwe. Lovu with another. It was all to Kaiser early on, but Ursula Lovu's really stepped up in this second quarter from a shooting point of view. 
Mwamba just put in Wafagareda under intense pressure to receive that ball. She ran almost from one side of the court to the other. No change of direction to get that. She was rewarded with that of court, but great pressure there. Nice steal from Rajapaksa. Not to be outdone. Kuramba steals the ball back the other end to Circle Edge. Lovu, no doubt, is going to finish this off with beautiful style with those arms over her. Fantastic. That is netball at its best from Zimbabwe. What an exciting team this is turning out to be. Pass through mid-court from Sri Lanka. Back to Amaro onto the centre. Feeds it into one of the Laker. Hold time, please. Now, this is interesting. We have... Contact called on the outside. Intentional obstruction was the call. Amara wants her. Into Sivalingam once more. That's number 25. Zimbabwe still three ahead. Almost an intercept from the wing defence, Rajapaksa for Sri Lanka. Lovu nails it. And you can just hear the Zimbabwe song coming in, singing that ball through the net. Fantastic support. The drums are going. It sort of took everybody's surprise in this auditorium, didn't it? They came dancing in, the Zimbabweans, and then these fans just started singing and chanting and I think court two's not only in danger I think it has upstage court one here on day one I would agree with that certainly and the party's definitely oh that's unlucky there for Marawansa but yeah totally agree with that absolutely electric atmosphere but Sri Lanka are totally staying in touch and distance they're not phased by the atmosphere not going their way Lovo Sends home another one for Zimbabwe. Back out to five clear. That's how they started the quarter. Sri Lanka came storming back, got within one goal. But this Zimbabwe team, tell you what, they're made of something. They really are. That was unlucky by Jayasuria there. Was unable to cut off the baseline. Pretty really great rebound from Takaiza. Slotting it through the net. You can see their connection is good. You had Lovu running the baseline there. Fancy footwork. Felistus Kwangwa, but it goes the other way. Oh, Kwangwa just unable to get a hand to that one as well. But I've been really impressed by Kwangwa's work rate. She's doing so much on one of the out court, but she's also getting back. <laughs> and then able to feed the ball from the centre third into Takaiza. Nice work. Zimbabwe. Great stats for Takaiza. 22 of 24 so far. That's over 90%. That's what you want from your target woman up front. Structural in defence. Sure. And this is something. There's four minutes left of the second quarter, and our goal attack for Sri Lanka is yet to take a shot. Unbelievable. And you get the feeling the longer this goes on, even as Sivir Lingam converts that opportunity. The longer it goes on, Sri Lanka are gonna, perhaps going to have to look at plan B here, because at the moment, they're five goals behind. Absolutely, and it looks as though that's the game plan, is for goal attack, whoever that may be at the moment, it's one of the Laker, is to be a playmaker, is to also be another feeder, but you can't do that for the whole tournament. You can't, you can't put Sivir Lingam under that pressure for... 60 minutes of every single game. It's all shapes and sizes. Five foot two under uh, under Lovu converts another one for Zimbabwe. As the six foot nine Sivalingam waits at the other end. Ball out of court. Turnover for Zimbabwe. Lovu coming up high for that ball. Happy to play it round. Fantastic footwork to get that nice long ball in. Oh, footwork called on Lovu. Malawi, the centre, just 
Balancing on that one foot right till the last moment. Sri Lanka work it towards the circle. And this is a prime position. You want your goal attack to be putting up the ball. She's doing so much work out in front. They get there at the end. They have got another shooting option. Sefu Kavala, who's a six for five goal shooter sitting on the bench. So there are there are options for, for Sri Lanka if they wanted to double up with two tall timbers under the goal. Yeah, that's it. It's I just think they, they their game plan is obviously the feeders in there are really key to this. And we've got Amarawansa and Wafa Gareda really taking control of that feed, but it's a lot of pressure to put under Sivalingham. Two minutes to go. In this second quarter, Zimbabwe won the first 19-14. But it's tighter here in the second. Just a goal separates them. 15-14 as it stands, 34-28 overall. Offside goal attack. Offside goal attack, free pass. Zimbabwe, one of four African nations playing here. Second in the African qualifier held last August. To reach the Netball World Cup for the first time, lobbed into Sivalingam once more. Zimbabwe. She picks up another one. Sri Lanka, they won the Asian qualifying tournament, playing their third consecutive, their tenth overall Netball World Cup. Beautiful hands from Joyce Sakaiza. Rolls it back in off the fingers. work and you can see that doubling up is really starting to take its toll coming in the back door was Felistas Kwanga I don't think Sivalingam saw her coming now the lob into to Kaiza that was good ball movement from Zimbabwe side to side using the width asking questions of the Sri Lankan defence and questions they are asking that's it and you'd think at half time that Taleka Jinnah Dansa, the Sri Lankan coach, is going to have to talk about some strategies against Takeza because they're just unable to win ball on a one-on-one. -on -one. You want to see perhaps them trying the Jiva role, the Jiva mental role to roll around the back of that black space. Oh, and Lovu's got a defensive game as well. Is there anything this lady can't do? Ursula Lovu putting on a show. Here she is again. You put those three phases together, and that's about as good as it gets from Ursula Lovu. Fantastic. Could this be a star in the making? I think so. Well, well, well. Second quarter done. First half done. Zimbabwe, 38-29 against Sri Lanka. And their fans are absolutely loving it. We'll take a break and have some highlights next, but what do you make of this Zimbabwe team, Camilla? We've got a few seconds left. Just wrap up that first half for us. I mean, welcome to the World Cup. That is way, the way to stake your claim on this competition. Some fantastic work from Lovu. She is the star of the show at the moment. Takeza, a great backbone in there. Welcome to the World Cup, Zimbabwe. Absolutely. They have come with the noise and with the game. We'll take a break now and see you on the other side for some Zimbabwe highlights in Liverpool. Welcome back. Zimbabwe leading Sri Lanka after two quarters by 38 goals to 29. Over on the other court, Australia dominating Northern Ireland. They're the other two teams in this group. Remember the top three from each group of four will go through to the second stage and then it all starts again. But it was a very impressive performance from the girls in green, Zimbabwe. Their goal shooter, Joyce Takaita there on the left, a shot backed up by Ursula Lova, who really came into the picture in the second quarter. And they have a nine point lead over Sri Lanka, who are running left to right, and almost immediately it's a turnover. Hey, 
Lopez Lopez. Such great feet. And now into to Kaiser. She goal defense. Take a moment. Instruction goal kick with Andrew Goal. It's a long way. Her face doesn't change. There's no expression. She's not phased. Again, we talked about the fact that she's really that calming influence on that Zimbabwe attacking lineup. Unflappable, isn't Unflappable she? Unflappable is a great word. Zimbabwe hit 40 early in the third quarter. Civil England waits under the goal, but there's another turnover that time from Felicitas Kwangwa. And here come the gems once again over the top to Takaiza. Oh, within a matter of not even two seconds, three seconds, getting the ball up court after this intercept. Brilliant stuff. That interception from Corumbo, I mean, that is your bread and butter backing up there to win that ball. Really lifts your team. Advantage contact. So Zimbabwe playing in their first Netball World Cup, but they are the highest seeds on the world rankings, 13th. Overall, compared to Sri Lanka, who are 18th, Zimbabwe come out of a, a tough netball region Montem, in Africa. Montem. So this is the first time they've been here. That's Holding a play. Onto the ankle here. Yeah, yeah, you that's... don't want to see that. Yes, goal attack, you too. Oh, yeah, they can't afford to lose Ursula Lovu. She's still down back on mid-court as Sivalingam converts number 30. I think we're going to have time off here, yeah. Yeah, this doesn't look good for Ursula Lovro. You can bring her off. You can bring yeah, her the off. delayed reaction to Take that, not as promising. Oh, she just stepped on the heel of Jaya Surya, didn't she? Yeah, a really common thing. Especially when it's so contested, hopefully, hopefully it's not too serious. I mean, I'm not sure they can start the game with a still on the court here. They've got to let it get off. They do have to let it get off. Warm applause for Ursula Lobut, who's been brilliant in this match. She heads to the sideline as oh. Almost takes it away from Sri Lanka once more. She's done that a few times already. Sivalu Lingam looking for number 31 here. If she can get possession, she can't. Oh, fantastic still. Kwangwa again it was. What a team they are working out to be, these two. The combination of one of them running the front, the other taking behind and the elevation that they can produce. And then taking it down, not able to convert that. To Kaiser, but that's if, if you need to if beat a shooter that's six foot eleven, this is a masterclass at it. Wanali off the bench for Zimbabwe at goal attack gets her first goal of the match. That's what the head coach would have been looking for. The uh, sorry, Lloyd Makumba, who runs this Zimbabwe team. Lose Lovu. Bonali in connection there with Takaita. Every time the ball goes through the hoop, a huge roar erupts here. How many do you think there are in here? There's got to be 1,000, 1,500 Zimbabwean fans here watching this game on court, too. Oh, it's fantastic. What a community they have here, but I'm sure some will be travelling fans as well. Fantastic. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, 13 goals down now. They need to find something, they need to find it quick. You can just sense that Sri Lanka have totally lost confidence. Even in the feed to Sivillingham, they've not had as many opportunities in the four minutes that they've been playing so far. And we're going to see a goal attack put up a shot. Oh, wow! There we go. <laughs> One of the Lanka. The goal attack for Sri Lanka. That's her first goal of the match. Fantastic. And she's sitting on 100%. <laughs> Look at that. 
Well, so is Sibylinga, to be fair. She's got 30 from 30. <laughs> Do you know what? The, re the records before this match in a World Cup was Sibylinga, 59 from 59 in a World Cup game back in 2001. Sri Lanka actually lost the game, but she scored all their points ahead of this match. We thought at half time we might be on for something similar, but no, one of the Laker has intervened. And that might help Sri Lanka. Well, it will give the Zimbabwe defence something to think about, if nothing there else. There she goes again. Fantastic. Why has it taken you 15 minutes to do that? Malawi. Wing defence, contact. Centre pass for Zimbabwe, contact call. Well fed into Zakai as she sticks out that long left leg to get position, but has to give it away. A body destruction goal attack. Amara once it sends it through to Wathagera. Here's Amara once who again leaping forward to get the ball back. And that's it. Cut. Gangava in a wing attack for Zimbabwe. Amara Wansel just wasn't happy with going forward there, happy to go back to the line, but Zimbabwe putting on the pressure on the line as well. Oh, fantastic interception there from Kwangwa. Read it beautifully, that square ball across the circle edge is an absolute present for any defence to win that, but she came on a beautiful angle, converted the other end. Have a look at this footwork to get across that, and that was created by the work that was done out in front of her from the centre and wing defence. Stop the ball getting to the top, force it long, and then those long opportunities for an interception. We've got a serious role going on here. I mean, that might be something serious. It's a bang on the head, it looks like, for Makusha. She's been stepping up physically. Just bring her off. Okay. It's the elbow, isn't it? The Simple elbow England, on the way down. down. Yeah. 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 It was completely Keep unintentional. Going. Yeah, but she Keep really going. looks like she's in Keep some pain. Really looks like she's in some pain. I mean, that's six foot eleven coming down on your eye socket. Oh dear. She'll get a nice pack on that. We wish her the best. She's been brilliant, Charlene Makusha, in this match. All the turnovers, the way she's been leaping like a gazelle to try and intercept those balls that have been thrown into Sibylingam. So we hope we see her back before too long. 45-33, Zimbabwe leading Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka in possession. Here's the goal attack again. Wana Thaleka lays it off this time to Sibylingam. And can Sri Lanka take advantage of the fact that We've seen Makusha taken to the bench. Oh, I think that just answered my question. Like for like, goalkeeper, Rudo Karume, proving that she can do just as good of a job in that backing up situation. Look at the height difference in the two of them. Lloyd Makumbe, the coach, would be very happy to see that. He wouldn't be happy, of course, about Makusha going off, but for Ruda Karume to come on. All five foot two of her, an intercept the long bomb. That's athletic. Almost an intercept from Jaya Surya. Into Takaiza. No problem, Takaiza. 95% she's shooting in this match. Contact, goal attack, penalty. Great contest there. Rafa Guerrero holding on to that nice and strong. Underarm pass, intercepted. Felicitas Kwangwa. Oh, she has to give it back. That would have been number six for the match from Kwangwa. She's the intercept queen for Zimbabwe, no doubt about it. Sibylingam, 
silences the Zimbabwean fans momentarily. Great second phase there. Just unable to keep that one in, but... Mazikavak, Kengava, sorry. Great second phase, great preparation there. Yeah, Mazi Kangava at wing attack, she's come in for Perpetua Suchatina, the captain. Send a pass, Sri Lanka. They're down by seven, they need to go on a run. I mean, this shows some real lack of confidence from Sri Lanka. We have a five foot two goalkeeper against your six foot eleven goal shooter. It should, you should be able to do that with your eyes closed. So, yep, the confidence is low, but if Mendes gets in this game a little bit more. Makusha on the sideline, nursing that knock to the, the forehead area she picks up earlier. I think she'll be all right. It's a guide zone. Position, precision. The big right hand of Felistas Kwangwa again. She is playing an aerial game out there. Unbelievable. I mean, the smarts, the ability to be able to cut off the front stuff, run the back. She's really covered some ground tonight. And has entered into this World Cup with, with real presence. So you watch, you see it on the big occasion, tournaments like this, World Cups, Commonwealth it's Games, etc. Players really come through and Kwangwa is one of those and so is Takaiza. 35 That's years of age, still getting it done. This is great defence that we're seeing from Zimbabwe. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. And like I said, the work that the centre and wing defence are doing out in front of them in the circle there, they're not allowing anything to go short, so they're not allowing stuff to land on the circle edge, which is forcing them to have to look long, have to put that long ball in, which, which is an interception in the taking. And you can see that on that last feed, they weren't even close to hitting the space it needed to be. She won't get the intercept stat for the last one because it ended up going over the sideline, but they get the ball back effectively. That was all about Kwangwa once more. Over the top to Takaita in traffic, muscles up, leans in. 10 to 2, the intercepts in favour in Zimbabwe. You want to tailor the tape, that's it. Buonali. Contact goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. With the rebound from Takaiza. That's just what you want, isn't it? Your goal attack just off point, but then your shooter comes in with the big board. <laughs> Sri Lanka on the charge. Two and a half to go in this third quarter. And there's another goal for Juana Peleka. 51-39. And you can just see the difference in, in the stats. You've got Sivalingham on 36 from 36. You've got Takaiza on 36 from 38. So your difference there is what your goal attack is putting up. So, you know, they've missed a trick here, not having their goal attack take on more opportunities. Yes, you've got an accurate goal shooter, but every other team is going to have an accurate goal shooter. So you can't have, a, you know, a, a two-on-one situation in there. So I think they've missed a trick there. 11 goals, however, still another quarter to go. So the game isn't over. I mean, look, take nothing away from Siva Lingham. She's 37 of 37 out there. She's doing absolutely nothing wrong. She's absolutely doing her job. And, and my question would be to, to the coach would be, you know, was that the game plan that your goal attack doesn't take on as many shots, that she acts as a feeder? Do you want your goal attack to have more volume? You know, certainly as a coach, I would be saying, put those shots up. 
He's got a target in there, but every other team is going to have that accurate goal shooter. Speaking of accuracy, Buonali bangs in another for Zimbabwe, up to 52. Nice pass that to the goal attack. One of the Laker sends it into Tajini Sibilingam. That's the ninth goal of the match. Rajapaksa at wing defence here. Oh, she's she's really just been working hard, Rajapaksa. We've not mentioned her much tonight, but she's really, really doing a job on... Three intercepts for her in this game so far. Yeah, she's she's really tracking... Throw in Zimbabwe. Madika Vangava. Really well, she's not letting her have an inch and challenging on interceptions. She's quietly been getting on with her job. Advantage contact. Into the final 10 seconds of this third quarter. To Kaiser with another finish. Zimbabwe up to 53. 11 goal lead off the post and back out for Zimbabwe. And their fans bring the noise once more. They will go to the break. There's a smile from Joyce. She's been all calm, all collected, all game, but she shows some emotion. And why not? At 53-42, they've been excellent. They have, and she's an absolute joy to watch. She's she's a real uh, sturdy person in the back there. Nice lead going in for Zimbabwe. Third quarter time. We'll see you for the fourth quarter next. I mean, if we have a look at the the feeding stats, we won't be able to see it, but. Amaranta for Sri Lanka is sitting on 29 feeds. One of the Lakers on 20 feeds as a goal attack. Whereas you've got five for Buonali, the other end, and 22 for Malaudi for Zimbabwe. So it's a huge amount of feeding for the goal attack. And half of those, I would imagine, are in the shooting circle, so they could be shooting opportunities. Rather strong catch and position from Joyce to Kaiser. A little breath after that one. She's played every minute, but she's been excellent. Jaya Surya back to Rajapaksa, Sri Lanka. Working hard to get the ball near the circle, offsides the call. Ratha Gadira going offside there. Someone's lost a bib. It's the wing attack. Ratha Gadira. Sichatima, Zimbabwe captain, back on court after having a rest for the third quarter. Fed in by Buonali to Takaita. We saw Ursula Lovu tweak her ankle in that third quarter. She looked in a bit of pain, had to limp off. But Buonali's come on, formed a, a quick and clever combination with Takaita. Yeah, a different style in what we see from Buonali. Not quite as flamboyant, but effective with her movement, good timing, and a nice entry point for Sakaiza to have the space when needed. Advantage obstruction. Rafa Gaverda in combination with one of the Lake of the goal attack. Kwangwa there just getting penalised for coming round the body, but deemed to be contacting. Great work great from her to this morning. She's missed one. Tajini Sibilingam for the first time in the match misses a shot at goal. She was 39 from 39 up to that point. Oh, what a pass. Fantastic there from Sichitima. She looks one way, she fakes on one hand, on one leg. She flings it into the other side. Lovely flair. Lobbed over the top to oh. Sichatima into Buonali and to Kaiza. The right hand, elbow up, wrist down, smooth as you like. Lovely, and you can just see that injection of flair just lifts the team. You can do that when you're 16 goals up. We didn't see that so much from the in the first quarter from her, but a welcome sight, I'm sure, to the Zimbabwe fans. Rudo Karume. 
with Look the intercept. Look at this. A five foot two backing up. I won't stop talking about that, I'm telling you. You're just being heightest, Camilla. No, She's playing not, brilliantly not, though, isn't she? Not really is. I tell you what, I tell you what, if there are if there are um, stereotypes to squash water collision, wow. great stuff. Both back up, brush it off, nothing to talk about here. As I was saying, we talk about stereotypes and there are none. When you've got a style for style that can win ball like that, we talked about goal attacks being shorter in Lovu. Doesn't make a difference when you've got the strategy, when you've got certain skills, and we've just seen that in the other end from Karume. What a pleasure. That's 43 goals in this match for Joyce Sakaza. 93%. That is exactly what you want from your main weapon up front. So casual. And that shooting style that we talked about, the one-handed African style shooter. I spent some time in Uganda last year and you could see from the little ones that we would teach in the schools, they would learn to shoot that way with the one hand. So it's, it's something that's learned from when they're very young. And it's proving to be very successful for them this morning. Yeah, different styles from different nations, aren't there? I remember hearing Liz Ellis talk about the one-handed shoulder pass that the Aussies like to do, and some other nations will be taught the, the chest pass, more conventional when they're younger. Absolutely, yeah. And, and the one thing is, I mean, as a coach, I talk about having a lot of tools in the box and, you know, having variety. But when you do something that well, if you can home in on your talent and your and what's strong for you, there's no reason why it can't overcome anything there. But yeah, you definitely see that with a with an Aussie style. Camilla Buchanan, expert commentary, assistant coach of the Saracens, Mavericks, former star mid mid quarter as well. Needless to say, I had my time. Tell you what, Joyce Takata having her time right now. She's having a ball out there. And why not? You're on the world stage, your first World Cup. Doesn't it phase. Hold time. Just here. Tell you what, I'm not, I'm not sure if they're... Uh, we just brought Sybil Ingham put this one home. I'm not sure if this particular match from Court 2 is being streamed down in Australia, but I hope that... Joyce Sakaiza's three children get a chance to watch this game. She's got a 14-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a three-year-old back in Australia where she lives and plays a netball. And mum's on fire in Liverpool. Here she is again. I mean, the coolest mum of all time, right? If that was my mum, well, my mum's pretty cool too. However, if that's your mum, you are definitely going to school and, and trying to show some, some video of that. Fantastic. What a role model. Challenge that pass. Oh, oh, what a pass. What a take. Fantastic work. Jay Surya unlucky with the fly, but what an absolute touch on that. If we can see this, the long ball. Goalkeeper comes out, missed it. What a touchdown from Gualani to Tikaiza to finish that off. And she does it again. Showtime from Zimbabwe. Take a bow. Take a bow. I'll tell you what, I don't know where this lot are going out tonight, but I want to find out the venue. Let's make it. Early start tomorrow, though, for real. Yeah, maybe not. You can see the Zimbabwe coaches, though, on the sideline really screaming at them. They, they want more. They want more. You can see this is their first game. They know that it's 13th rank versus 18th rank, so this, you know, this should be a win for them. However, the coaches want more. Well, they were seen as the unknown quantity coming into this World Cup, of course, Zimbabwe. But I'll tell you what, they're making headlines here on day one, and people are going to stand up. And Lloyd Makumbe in shot there, former basketballer himself. He's coached this team for a long time. And they are a side to be reckoned with. Absolutely. Oh, enjoying themselves now. The smiles have come out now. But absolutely, teams are going to have to pay attention to the Zimbabwe team. 
some serious analysis is going to have to go on because what a team they're proving to be. I was talking to Lloyd Mukumbe, the head coach, you saw his shot there earlier in the week. I was saying, what sort of analysis have you been able to do on some of the other teams? Haven't played netball, World Cup netball, of course, in the past. But he said, no, we've watched all the all the Asian qualifier games. We've seen all the games Sri Lanka have played in that. We know what they're about. And they look like a team that have done their homework. Absolutely. And what's great, actually, about um, some of the teams, so Singapore, for example, have the Asian Championships, um, but they also um, invite some of the African nation countries to get what they, they have to have these these international tests. That that's the, that's the key. You know, if you have more test matches against each other, and they can do that, and that's what Singapore have really been doing. Um, if they get the test matches, what a step round! Love a little fake left and then dish it right. Masterclass in passing that. From Sichitima. Sivalingam. Number 43 for her tonight, 98%. Giving some encouragement to her teammates to try and stay in the fight here. But the clock's against them, approaching the final five minutes of the fourth quarter. And still that 11. She's got such a strong hold. Such a strong hold. You can't get around her. The angles that she produces are so oh so difficult to get around. Oh, and a steal, another steal from Gulani. Now they're having fun. The feet from Perpetua such a team here with just brilliant onto this ball. Balances it on the right on the end of the fingers and then just flicks it up. So skillful. 54 from 57. 71 goals in by Boyce. Impressive first score at your first World Cup so far. It's a great amount of goals to get on the scoreboard. We win it back again. And they've turned the ball over time and time again in their favour in this match. Going for one herself with Disanayaka. Zimbabwe maintain possession. This, this is just a masterclass in the front third from Zimbabwe. Pass over the top to Malaudi. Into Wanali. She has another goal. Four of five for her. Long pass to Sivalingam has been intercepted. And the goal attack gets called for the contact. Well, it ain't going your way. Yeah. Oh! oh. One hander from. Malaudi. Great contest there. Fantastic that the umpire let that contest go. Another intercepted. Zimbabwe. And they come away with it. Heading towards the circle. Sichatina bounces it into Wanali. Give her great confidence, won't it, Camilla? She's come off the bench and. She stood up as well, the 22-year-old. Well, that's just it, and they're the kind of subs that you want on your bench, that you can interject, and they have a real impact. She's really made a name for herself here and made Lloyd McCumber's decision difficult for the next one. They stayed in the fight, Sri Lanka, didn't they, through the, the first three quarters, but you just saw a graphic pop, pop up on screen. 21 to 5. 22 to 5 now in this fourth quarter. I mean, you talk about finishing strong.
and they've just run out of steam. They had a game plan and that game plan was shut down and they haven't had an answer for it. So they're going to go away from this and really have a look at what other options they have and try and get those right for their next opportunity. Australia and Northern Ireland to come for both of these teams in this group. Australia beat Northern Ireland 88 to 24, the tournament favourites, the defending World Cup champions over on court one. It's an impressive start for them. But this court, court two, is all about Zimbabwe. The team have made their debut and they've made it in fine style, supported by this wonderful crowd here. It's been a privilege to watch it, to be honest. An absolute privilege. And as we said, what an entrance to make. And really contenders, you know, they're going to put some, some teams under pressure. I'm excited to see where this goes for them next. They certainly have the support to lift them anyway. Well, it gets tough next for them. Australia. That'll be a real test for Zimbabwe, without one. But they've shown they're balanced, aren't they? They've got, they've got attacking play, they've got great skill and huge work rate in the mid-court. In the backcourt, they've got defenders who can, who can win possession and turn over ball. That's what you need against the big teams. Absolutely, and you can see Tavaita brings a real air of calm to this team. Like you said, you, you know, we've got the flair, you've got the defenders that can turn over the ball as well, and, and it's picking out the right things at the right time and, and making sure that they can do that for 60 minutes against a team, a world championship team, that whose pressure will be a lot more than what we've seen this afternoon. To Kaiser, 59, and she's got 24 seconds to try and get number 60. Flung over the top, oh. just bobbles out of the hands, into the hands of Buenali. She sends it home, approaching the final 10 seconds. It's Sri Lankan sends a pass. I'm not sure Takaiza will have time to bring up the 6-0. Well, I'm not sure I can add to that, really. The noise will tell the story. Zimbabwe, supported by this vociferous crowd here in Liverpool, have made their World Cup debut and they have made it in fine style. 79-49 in their World Cup opener. Camilla Buchanan, that was, I mean, you talk about, you talk about rookie performances, debuts in major tournaments. I'm not just talking netball, I'm talking any sport. Zimbabwe turn up here, and they've absolutely smashed it. And that is exactly it, they have turned up. And to put 79 goals on the scoreboard for your first game in your first World Cup, absolutely fantastic. It doesn't get better, the support that you'll see from around this arena has been just as good as that performance and what a way to see through their first performance. They picked up 17 goals from gaining possession in this match. I mean, that, you, you turn over ball with those kind of numbers. Goals from turnovers, 16. That's an impressive stat. And and that's something that, you know, they'll be looking at how they can replicate that against the likes of Australia because that's going to be key for them is, is you know, is winning that ball. They know that they'll have the opportunities the other end, but that's really impressive. 46 goals from centre pass. They finished with 79. Is that, is that a number they'll need to lift against Australia? Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, what, what was really impressive from Zimbabwe's centre pass was that they had a really even... Um, 
separation of who was taking the centre pass receipt. So they had they had uh, wing attack sitting on 26. Sorry, that's not right. But the, sorry, the the, the uh, even spill between wing attack, goal attack, wing defence, and goal defence, and taking the ball, it was really evenly spread. So that was really key for them that they weren't able, Sri Lanka weren't able to pick out a certain player that they could shut down for a centre pass. So real variety in that. We'd like to see them pushing forwards a little bit more. They'll have to do that against against Australia, but not too bad for their first outing here. And all in all, what did you make? Sri Lanka, they obviously struggled on the scoreboard, but did they, did they show they got a lot of room for improvement? They did, and they, they did struggle on the scoreboard, but when we look at what we talked about earlier uh, earlier on, it's, you know, the, the, the fact that they put so much pressure on Sivilling and taking so many of their goals, I would like to see the goal attack come in a little bit more. Feeders, you know, they were accurate, they had, they had possession. Struggled a little bit with their structure in defence. I think they, they did. They lacked the variety um, on Takeda against the small savvy teams against Australia, Northern Ireland. You know they have those target shooters also, so they're going to have to have a, a, a plan B if they're going to want to win some more ball. Sri Lanka team just leaving the court. They'll go up against Northern Ireland in their next match. That'll be a, a good contest for them. Remember the top three go through to the. The next stage so that tournament isn't over by any means whatsoever only one team will play for 13th place the minor places here so win that game against Northern Ireland and they're in for playing in the main draw absolutely. in the second stage absolutely and uh, speaking to Talaka Jinadasa last week she said that you know Sri Lanka they're, they're you know they're ranked 18th in the world the aim is to get into the top 10 for her, and you know that's what that's what her goal is. And here comes Zimbabwe. Have a listen to this. They've all stayed in at these fans, and they are applauding their team, the mighty gems, as they leave the court. What a performance! It's fantastic. Celebrities in the making. You need momentum in big tournaments, don't you? Absolutely. You need to feel it, you need to feel that, that buzz, that energy, when you're on the big show. It's the confidence, and they started with confidence, they started with a lift, and it didn't it didn't falter, they kept it throughout, and absolutely, it's such a short amount of time to build that confidence, so to start that way, going into the next day, they, they can start with that confidence. We'll look back at some of the highlights now. It was, it was really tight early on, opening quarter, wasn't it? Sibling was just sending them down for fun. But bit by bit, Zimbabwe turned over ball, got those intercepts working, and they converted their chances on the opposite end. Absolutely, and they were able to force those balls off and the other end to Kaiser. She just couldn't be, she couldn't be put off her game. She was solid with her holds, solid with her shots and it just wasn't to be the other end. And then we have we Karume. We saw Mabusha go off, didn't we, with that, sorry, coming up with that head knock, and um, we hope she's okay, because she was brilliant at the back here against Sibylinga. Oh, she was fantastic, and, and we thought that what she was doing was pretty good. But Karume, in at five foot two, proves that she was a fantastic substitution to be able to make for Zimbabwe. Yeah, they started showing a bit of flair too, didn't they? The scoop pass, the little no-look dish. They were, they were, they opened the playbook down the stretch in this one. Oh, and that's the team that's after my own heart. That's the kind of stuff. Look at that. One-handed, split in the air before landing. Just an absolute joy to watch. And, you know, like we said, you can do that when you're 20 goals up. Fantastic, I hope we see some more of that beautiful Zimbabwe flair. OK, let's get some reaction now. We can go inside and hear from what I imagine will be a very happy Zimbabwe head coach, Lloyd Makumbe. He's with Hannah. Well, first of all, I'm going to speak to Tilaka Jinadasa, the Sri Lankan head coach. Uh, Tilaka, not the start that you want to a World Cup. What's your assessment of that performance? 
Yeah, I think the, the, my attacking side did well at the court, but the defenders were, were having very hard time. They were unable to come around that big shooters. That's make them frustrated, so they were doing some unforced errors. So that cost us because they, we didn't have much turnovers at the first quarter and second quarter. But I, I, I personally think that the, especially mid-court worked well. You were really in it for the first three quarters. It was, it was that final quarter where they really seemed to run away from you. Yeah, the final court, uh, f uh, first centre passes, from the first centre pass, they were like just not going. It's, it's kind of a, they were lacking with the f momentum. So they were finding it hard to get into their usual momentum. So, so and the defenders were not much supporting at that end also. So that cost us the big margin, yeah. I've got to ask as well, in terms of your attacking end and your shooters in the circle, was it part of the game plan for the, for the goal attack to shoot less or, or not take the shots and just get the ball to Siva Langham? No, our strategy was to just, yeah, to have a long lob, but uh, in the middle of the line, so the defenders were able to get that. So then we changed the strategy, so I asked the goal attack to move around and take a few shots, just to lay... I mean, the distract the defenders, so it's worked well, so she managed to score three, four goals in the last quarter. You go up next against Northern Ireland. What are you going to do against them? What are the lessons you're going to take into that match? Yeah, we'll stick with the, the usual strategy. We just try to work with our long lobs. So if it works, we continue. If not, we'll just change our strategy halfway through. Just hoping for the best. Best of luck. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, Sri Lanka will go again against Northern Ireland. Here's the numbers from that match. And 79-49, uh, it finished. Intercepts 13-3. That was pretty crucial. And uh, Sri Lanka just turning the ball over far too much in that game to get enough headway to challenge Zimbabwe. OK, we can hear from the player of the match now, Joyce Takaiza. She scored 59 of Zimbabwe's 79 goals. Here she is with Hannah. Well, Joyce, as we just heard from our commentator, you scored 59 of 79 goals for Zimbabwe in their first ever Netball World Cup match. You must be pretty chuffed. Yeah, I'm so excited and I'm so happy we did it as a team, we fight as a team and we did it. It was a really enjoyable game to watch. What was it like being out there on the court on the world stage for your team? Oh, it's a dream come true. We have played netball, I think I've played netball for the past 23 years, but we have never reached this far. To be here, it's just a dream come true for everyone in my team and even the, the committee as a, as a team, Zimbabwe as a nation like it's just something else that is so good so exciting and i think everyone is watching from back from back home you look to have some really strong connections all over the court how far do you think this team can go in the tournament i think we are going to get to the final stage the trophy is ours this year that's the kind of thing we like to hear just give me a word on the fans they were incredible out there what was it like playing in front of strong such strong support we didn't know we have so much fans for Zimbabwe. It was so exciting, so lovely. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You've got three little ones watching at home. I know they're over in Australia, but they're going to have some good highlights of mum to watch, aren't they, when they wake up? My daughter, I think you are watching ma what mum is doing. I know you play the same position as mum plays. Keep it up. Keep watching mum. You'll be good like me. She certainly will. Thanks so much. Well done. Thank you. Oh, that's lovely. Joyce Takaiza. What a performance from her. And here's the standings of Group A. Australia, they beat Northern Ireland 88 to 24 early on. So their goal difference, very impressive indeed. And Zimbabwe with an opening win as well. They go up against the Diamonds of Australia tomorrow. OK, let's hear from the Zimbabwe head coach, as promised, Rudo uh, Lloyd Makumbe. Well, Lloyd, when you pitched in your head the opening game of Zimbabwe's World Cup campaign, did you see them scoring 79 goals? Um, uh, to be honest, I uh, never thought we could reach 79, but I, I had absolute uh, faith in the girls. They were fantastic to watch out there. Which connections really impressed you most? Because you look solid from front to back. Yeah, we were a little bit disturbed by the tall goal shooter, but then uh, we always uh, count on our mid court to... Uh, to offence, so it really worked uh, just by the book. You worked really well off the turnover as well, scoring 16 of your goals off turnover. How crucial is something like that when you go into your, your next match against Australia and then Northern Ireland? It's very, very crucial because uh, 
to win a game of netball, you need to make sure that the, all the turnovers are put uh, to, to goals. So we, we are working very much on that, uh, especially on tomorrow's game against the Aussies. What are your aims for the team for this tournament? What realistically are you hoping to achieve here? Uh, we are actually hoping to be in the top five. Yeah. Fantastic. Australia next then. Not going to be an easy game at all. What can you take from this into that game? And where do you need to tidy up and, and maybe be a little bit slicker against the Diamonds? I would say we need to tie, to tie up on our defence. We're not very perfect on, on, on defence. Uh, so we need to be uh, very cautious when we, we play a team like Australia who are tall and fast. Their uh, uh, transition is very well. So we need to work very hard on that. But otherwise, uh, I've got, I still have good faith in my girls. You've also got an eighth player, really, in the arena, haven't you, with those Zimbabwean fans? That was absolutely amazing. I never thought we would have... It was like we were at home. I would like to thank the fans for that. Well, thank you for a great game at Netball and good luck tomorrow against the Aussies. The pleasure is all mine.